Good morning and welcome to St. Joe's on this Easter Sunday morning. Today we begin the Sundays of Easter and for the next 50 days we will be encouraged to grow in deepening our grasp of the Paschal mystery and in making it part of our lives. Our celebration of Easter is a challenge to look deeply into the empty tomb and consider what it really means, not just for Jesus, but for us. He is risen, but are we? He is no longer to be found among the dead, but among the living. Is it the same for us? The chains of sin and death have no power over him. What about us? Easter morning transformed death into life for all time for those who believe. We can sense this in the reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Paul dares to tell them that they have already died and have been raised up with Christ, that their baptism has begun a new kind of existence for them. Then he goes on to urge them to set their minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. It sounds like he is urging a kind of withdrawal from ordinary life. As we read on in this letter, however, it becomes clear that he is very much thinking of ordinary life. He says that the negative stuff we all deal with, anger, lust, greed, deception, must be addressed with the healing power of the new life we have in Christ. The resurrection of Jesus enables us to let God reign in our ordinary lives in ways that demonstrate that we are part of a new creation. Not complete, obviously, but that kingdom is evident whenever we allow the spirit of the risen Lord to dwell in our hearts, minds, and bodies. If you were pressed to think of one word which conveys the meaning of Jesus' resurrection, what would it be? Would it be life, transformation, glory, eternity? For me, the word would be a resounding yes. In Jesus' resurrection, God has said yes to all that Jesus said and did. God said yes to every word and work from the Incarnation to the cross. In his book, The Content of Faith, Karl Rahner explains Jesus' resurrection in this way. There is no difference in the following two statements. First, this crucified one is he who has been received by God in such a way that he, together with his fate and the decision which that fate involves, has been ratified by God as having eternal validity. And the second statement, he is risen. In today's gospel, those who came to the tomb in the pre-dawn hours of that first Easter Sunday had a variety of reactions to God's ratification of Jesus. Mary Magdalene assumed that Jesus' body had been stolen. We are not told what Peter thought, but Luke's gospel indicates that he went home amazed. The beloved disciple featured uniquely in John's Gospel, saw and believed. In his book, A Risen Christ at Easter Time, Raymond Brown suggests that the variety, the varying response to the empty tomb reminds us that in the range of belief, there are different degrees of readiness and different factors that cause people to come to faith. Aware of the different reactions which Jesus' resurrection would invoke, the author of John's Gospel took care to address some of these concerns in, in, his, in his narrative. 
the fact that the wrappings were left in the tomb and that the cloth for the head was rolled up in a place by itself dispelled the idea that Jesus' body was stolen. Robbers would not have taken the time to tend to the burial cloths. In the coming to faith of the disciple whom Jesus loved, there is a lesson concerning the importance of love in the life of the believer. It seems that the disciple who was bound closest to Jesus in love was the quickest to look for him and the first to believe in him. Gradually, the loving faith community of the early church drew support from the scriptures for a fuller understanding of Jesus' resurrection. In time, the di discovery of the empty tomb as an indicator of Jesus' resurrection would yield to the more important appearances of the risen Lord. Today, as we celebrate the divine yes concerning Jesus, we are affirming our hope that one day all the little glimpses of the resurrection we have witnessed will come to full realization. Death will meet life and passion will find glory. On this Easter morning, we give thanks to the Lord whose mercy and love are without end. We give thanks to the Lord who delivers us from death and gives us new life. Let us rejoice and be glad and live in the holiness and truth which is ours. And I wish you a very happy and blessed Easter.